Holy. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining uh, the Hydro Basics show. Um, I am Mike Aho. I am the product manager for Hydro. And the other mug you'll see on the screen is Chris Gilbrunson. He's the director of customer success. And so what we'll be doing today is we'll, I'll give you a little bit of an introduction into what Hydro is, how it can help you out. And Chris will run you through a bit of a walkthrough of job setup and daily visits in Hydro, talk a little bit about the equipment calculator. And then I'll bounce back in and I'll tell you about some exciting new things that we're going to be launching in Hydro in the upcoming weeks. And then we'll have some Q&A for all you guys at the end. So at the end of uh, the, this show, the, the objective is that we want to show you basically why Hydro exists, what it can do, and it, how can it help you um, basically be more efficient at drawing buildings, get less pushback from your uh, your adjusters, and ultimately drive more business growth in all your water jobs. One of the first things I want to talk about is most of you in here have already sort of evaluated some of these software solutions in the market, maybe are currently using ours or one of the competitors. And I just wanted to outline some of the challenges that uh, that exist when using software and trying to mix it into the field documentation process. So basically what we found as a consistent challenge in the market these days is that a lot of these products out there have been, been designed for office people. Like they're ultimately the consumers of the data but they're not the ones that are actually out in the field driving and, and capturing all this data. So what's happened is that they've taken, the theory was with some of these competing products is that they've taken an office product and turned it into an app or some sort of field tool and assume that the, the field teams would just be able to adopt it and do their job effectively. And the problem is that, you know, the office people and the people out in the field, they live very different lives. Um, so their workflows are different and they're not easily transferable. And the result is the people in the field end up having to sort of hack their workflows to, to match what this office tool is supposed to capture. Um, they end up taking shortcuts, missing steps, or even resulting or resorting down to pen and paper documentation and just sending a pile of documents to the office for them to sort out. So it's a real big issue in the industry trying to adopt a tool in the field that actually works for teams that are out there trying to drive buildings. And in our view, the ideal tool is something that's going to be, you know, field teams first, essentially make it easy for just the average person out in the field, standing knee deep in water and in a very chaotic and challenging situation, make it easy for them to pick up and follow a process that will actually get the data that the office people need. That way, if it's easy to collect the, the data in the field, it's easy to filter that up to the office where they'll ultimately need it. And another ideal um, thing that for a, a software tool in the in the market would be that it has to be reliable anywhere in the world, essentially. So when you're in a remote location, you're in challenging conditions, you may or may not have power or internet connection, that tool's always got to be there for you. And some of our competitors don't have a tool like that. So that that's something that's a big gap in the marketplace. And then finally, the ideal solution would be something that's sort of an all-in-one application that can store, capture, and store all your information and have it accessible to anyone that needs it, any of the stakeholders that needs that data. It can be accessible and organized in one place in an efficient way. And essentially, we took those sort of philosophies, and that's how we built the solution of Hydro. So when we first uh, envisioned this product, we brought in some industry veterans that helped drive the development process, and we took uh, feedback and, and a bunch of requests from people that are already in the field, the restoration contractors, put them at the forefront of what we developed. And essentially that's kind of how we brought our application to market. And I mean, our teams, my team specifically, the design team, the dev team, we've all had a chance to go out knee deep in water, place equipment, try to moisture map and take readings in a very wet and chaotic situation. And so the philosophy, the philosophy behind our teams and what we develop. It's all about getting in the field and making sure that the field process runs smoothly. And so talking about going beyond just documentation, when you're when you're choosing these tools, documentation is one thing, but it's generally secondary to actually restoring a property and running your business. Um, so basically what we try to do is we go beyond just documentation. So we built out Hydro using the S500 best practices for dry, drying buildings. And really what that does is it helps your teams follow a consistent best practice drying process. 
And we do that through a task list that's been driven by these S500 standards. So essentially your team can go in and follow the same process every time and get the same results every time using the hydro workflow process. And one of the differentiators that we have compared to some of the competitors that might be mandated is that we make it really easy for teams to collaborate. So some of the, the solutions on the market, they force one person to be in the claim at a time doing work, or they force only one task being able to be completed at a time. And so what we do is we take the opposite approach. We allow teams to be flexible in terms of what they do and how they do it. And ultimately all the data that they collect and the work that they produce is filtered down into one, one common claim in, in one application. Um, it's also like for us, data is sacred. Being informed on what's going on in the job is, is one of the most important things to make sure it drives to plan and everything gets done appropriately. And so we have a nice dashboard on our home screen for Hydro. And essentially what that is, it allows you to see any different section of what's going on in your job, whether it be readings, equipment, alerts, that can all be accessed and viewed in a summary form through one click. And then making decisions in real time is another big thing. So when jobs start to go sideways, you, often what happens is there's some small problem that's starting to arise and it goes unnoticed and unaddressed, and then it becomes a big problem. We've implemented an alert system that has a variety of different ways that we can help people stay on track with their drawing goals and also address any small issue at the time it happens. So when you're taking a reading, we can alert you to whether or not that reading is being helpful or hurtful in terms of getting through the, the drawing process. And then finally, we make it really easy to justify what you've done on the job. So we have an equipment calculator that uses the S500 detailed calculation, which can't really be questions, questioned these days. It is the most effective and efficient way to justify what equipment you're placing on the job and for how long. And we also have a very slick way of having a variety of robust reports that will help you sort of tell a story of what's actually happened on the job. And then I'll hand it over to Chris and just maybe talk a bit about some testimonials and then he can do a bit of a walkthrough. Cool. Yeah. Just ahead of time, guys, before we hop into the screen share here and, and kind of get into the, the meat and potatoes of the presentation, I did just want to throw up a few testimonials here from uh, from two customers. Um, both Evan and John were coming from other moisture mapping solutions that were already in industry and were not getting the compliance that they were looking for from their teams. They found with the switch to Hydro and its, its mobile focus that they were able to really get the field staff on board and see a uh, significant uptake from their team, significant efficiency improvements. So I'm going to hop here into a screen share of the mobile app. Um, I'm also going to have Mike keep some eyes here on the chat when I, uh, when I keep my eyes off. If there's any questions along the way, guys, by all means, feel free to, uh, to throw them in the chat and we'll try and answer them in real time. I'm noticing a lot of people in the chat are existing N-Circle customers. So if there's any specific questions you have, you want to see how to do something while I have my screen up, uh, don't hesitate to, uh, to throw that in the chat. So what I'm looking at at the moment, I'm sharing my iPhone screen here. And what I've set up in N-Circle is an example claim. A claim is really just an address your team's working on a job, whatever you want to call it. Okay. You'll notice that I've kind of got a variety of different modules here uh, within N-Circle. Obviously, the focus today is going to be on Hydro, uh, but it is really, really important to also show some of the basic documentation capabilities. Now, before we got started here, um, I actually shared this file with Mike. Um, because we do really want to highlight the ability for multiple users to be in the account at once. We find a lot of systems out there are um, one user at a time in a manual upload process with larger teams can become a big um, efficiency uh, killer. So I have shared this over with Mike and Mike, while I share my screen, is also going to real time uh, provide some documentation as well in the room. So uh, you'll see here we use a room setup, right? Um, nice thing about the room setup, it's kind of the physical way that your team is already envisioning um, the claim that they're working on. So any room that I step foot in, whether I use it for unaffected area readings or whether I use it for affected area readings, I want to enter that into end circle and take really good visual documentation. So you'll see here kind of the process is as soon as I step foot in a room, I'll click on the add room. I'll select here from my list or I'll type in my own. And then I'll take overview photos. 
of the property slightly overlapping. Now at the same time here, I can have my fellow water tech, Mike, also taking photos of the property and I'm gonna real time see those in my application. So if we're dealing with you know, a large loss scenario, we're dealing with you know, a larger property, I would be able to split it up by floor, by room, et cetera, and have everyone contributing to the file at the same time. Perfect. Now, once I have every room documented that I need, I'm not gonna go through, through every single room here. You'll see here Mike's photos from the kitchen. He's just up at a, uh, at a cottage in the moment. But you'll see that Mike's photos from the kitchen are showing up in real time. They're also tagged by the user uh, that has taken the photos with date and time stamps applied to them as well. Um, so the idea here on the initial inspection, we can really kind of split up the workload. Perfect. Now, once I've created all of my rooms, I have the ability now to get into Hydro and start moisture mapping against those rooms or against those physical spaces. Okay. So if I go here into Hydro, I think we had a question earlier. The question was, is Hydro a separate app? The answer is no, it's all contained within the NCircle app, but I kind of like to describe it as an app within the app, right? We've built full S500 workflows into the Hydro section of the application. And this is kind of our designated place to do moisture mapping, okay? Now, <clears throat> my apologies. Now, right now I've got, a few alerts you'll see that I've had popped up, psychrometric uh, alerts if I haven't met my chamber challenges, have I placed enough equipment, et cetera. You'll see here I've got a few of these because I've kind of pre-created this file. This is what I would kind of refer to, and Mike, correct me if I'm wrong here, but kind of a PM dashboard, right? So as your team enters data into the system, we're trying to use this space to give you real-time insight into the job and allow a PM or a lead tech to correct issues that they see arising and kind of bubble them up before they become a bigger issue. So the first step and how we would start off every hydro job is getting into our task list, okay? Now, if you go into the task list here, basically what you'll see is that it's the S500 contained in a step-by-step -step workflow. So like Mike said, we've worked with a variety of trainers and consultants in the space that basically said, hey, I need something that I can give a brand new water technician that allows them to walk through the industry standard step-by-step, -step, right? And one of the biggest issues that we see in the industry right now is... Um, hiring, um, keeping technicians, right? Retaining good, good help, um, having the ability to give them kind of that step-by-step -step workflow um, and, it, you know, at least give them a sense of how to drive a building, you know, via the application can be a really, really effective way to onboard a new employee. So this task list is kind of preset with everything that you might need, but it can always be trimmed down. So you'll see here up in the top right hand of my screen, I've got a variety of task lists. Some of them I've turned off. For example, I said, I don't need an unaffected area HVAC reading. You might want one of those. I don't need an affected area HVAC reading. I'm not gonna draw a moisture map, but these can all be toggled on or off both at the organization level, as well as at the individual claim level. Uh, sorry here. Oh, and sorry guys, uh, we got a few questions on it. Uh, will this seminar be available on the website? Yes, we we will uh, we will post it. We'll also email it out to everyone um, either today or, or either tomorrow or uh, Friday of this week. So no need to uh, no need to take notes. Cool. So once I've defined what my default hydro task list is, it's really as simple as walking through it step by step. So in an ideal world, we would move through it top to bottom, but we're not gonna you know, stop someone from moving ahead or doing their job if they do not wanna follow it top to bottom, if they're not able to. It's also worth noting in hydro, there are some systems out there that do not let you leave the individual module before you complete it. We totally understand that there's you know flexibility required in your job. Maybe you need to go speak with a homeowner. You can always stop where you are in Hydro and then come back to it at a later time and it will remember the spot that you're in, okay? So the first thing I would do is define the source of loss and category of water. In this case, I'm just gonna give it a title that we had a burst pipe underneath the kitchen sink and it ended up being a category two. I'm gonna define my drying chamber. My drying chamber is obviously whatever physical barriers that I have um, set up. So this could be you know, an individual room if I have containment set up, or this could be an entire floor, an entire unit, et cetera. Uh, hey, Gene, sorry, if you, um, are they gonna lock in so they cannot be accidentally moved? Um, it, it is pretty pretty tough to like move a moisture point. It is pretty pretty clear where they should be. But if you have a specific question, just just shoot me a message afterwards. 
And then from there, I'm going to start taking my exterior reading, my unaffected area reference readings, mark a dry standard down for the job um, and, and continue onward. So um, if I go here and take an exterior reading, I'll try and use some realistic temperatures here. And then we also allow for the photo of a moisture meter which can be really helpful, right? Especially as we're taking uh, moisture meter readings, sometimes having that date and timestamp photo can be kind of the additional proof that you need um, in a drying report. If I take an unaffected area reading, you'll see that it'll only show my unaffected areas. So anything that I've not marked in my chamber will be an option here. And I'll take that for example, in the kitchen. It's also worth noting that GPP, vapor pressure, and dew point are all automatically calculated um, for uh, whoever's entering this on site. Just a, a heads up here, guys. If you don't mind throwing these in the, the Q&A just so we can keep, keep track of it. The question is, can the end circle sketch be used in hydro? Uh, the answer is yes, absolutely can. Uh, that, is a, uh, that is an option on the mobile, but any other, any other questions there, just move one over to the Q&A box. Perfect. Uh, next up, I would uh, utilize the uh, the dry standard reading here. We do ask for a dry standard reading per job. Uh, reason being one, obviously it complies with the standard. Um, and two, there can be massive variance, right? Depending on the property that you're in, depending on you know where in the building that you're actually taking the reading. Um, so we do ask for a dry standard per job. So I'll throw a few in here, just for example today, for example, a drywall dry standard. And here I'll say, we wanna get it down to 10%. We have a drying variance of 10% as per the standard. So once we read 11, we'll mark it off as dry. And you can do this with as many different uh, materials as you need throughout the course of a job. Two questions here, are DocuSketch sketches compatible with Hydro? Uh, you could upload it as a photo, um, but uh, unfortunately they haven't they haven't wanted to work with us uh, to date. That is why we built the End Circle floor plan tool, which I think would be you know a really great option if you are looking to integrate a nice scaled sketch into your uh, Hydro, into your moisture mapping. Um, and then the other question was there use a way to use an Xactimate sketch for the sketch and water migration. Once again, I do see some teams will take photos of it. It is worth noting that the end circle floor plan tool integrates into Xactimate. We just can't pull it back. So if you do take an end circle sketch and import it into Xactimate, definitely take like a screenshot or, or download the image. Perfect. From there, I'm now in my affected area. So I'm in my drying chamber, which in this case I've set up as the basement. And with that, I can take my affected area readings. I've already taken one here. You'll see this is an example of the alert that Mike has uh, mentioned earlier here and what can be really, really helpful for our teams. If I set a temperature tolerance in my account, it will tell me if I'm below my chamber tolerance, right? If I'm in a cold and wet environment that is not gonna foster the drying that we need, I will get that alert pop up. It's not gonna stop you from doing your job, right? It's just an FYI of, hey, here's something that you need to deal with, right? Same thing with relative humidity. We have a chamber tolerance 30 to 50%. If we're above that, you're gonna get a pop-up uh, as well. And it will show up in the alert section of the app. From there, I've entered in the dimensions of the room. So I've given a reading, I've entered the dimensions. I'm then gonna take some moisture point readings. From there, I'll select one of my materials that I require. You can also stack materials if you need to, right? So if you need to take like drywall followed by wood sill plate, insulation, et cetera, you have the ability to do so. And then I can add all my readings, right? So we do see sometimes see workflows where a project manager or a technician is actually gonna set up all the moisture points for them. See, Mike in real time is adding some moisture points in. As I come through maybe you know an hour later, two hours later as a water technician, I can actually go in and just tap to take the readings as they've been predefined for me. So for example, I'll say we're reading 25, 60 surface temp. It will show, hey, you're well above the reading. So once again, just kind of on the collaboration side, we do think it's a big differentiator in the space. Obviously the technology behind collaboration is not easy to do, uh, but we think, you know, as your team finds a workflow that works for you, um, it can really save a lot of time, especially on those larger losses.
Cool. Um, we have a few questions here. I think people are answering them kind of themselves. Uh, when taking photos of a moisture points, can we take multiple photos? Um, right now it is one photo per moisture point, but, uh, but we can definitely take that into consideration. Um, how do you stack readings? You just select multiple materials um, and then you uh, can pick them off. So uh, the biggest one that we see is like drywall, wood sill plate. You can stack and then take readings for both materials. Um, how do you determine the drying standards for each material in various locations? Uh, the drying standard would be by using an unaffected piece of material, um, you know, in close proximity to the actual uh, area, right? So like, for example, basements might be more damp. You would want to take an unaffected area reading as close to the source of loss as you can, and then use that since there's going to be massive variance on the dry standard job to job. Um, how do you do multiple moisture points of one material in one room? So another boy can go in the next day and find the same point. I might need a little bit of clarification on that one, uh, Jason. And can you add additional dry standards? Uh, yes, you can do as many dry standards as you need. Cool. And Jason, if you just want to clarify in the chat uh, or in the Q&A there, sorry, what you uh, mean by that, that would be awesome. Cool. So obviously here, Mike's taking these. Mike's my PM on this job, right? So he's going through, he's adding in all these moisture uh, points that I need to take readings for, and I'll just move in behind him and add in my reading, et cetera. Cool. Now, if I have um, certain areas, right? So this is kind of another example of a very simple alert, but one that's really helpful. Let's say Mike set up 10 places for me to take readings. That's awesome. I will get a pop-up here if I have not taken readings on um, all of them that I need. And also if I have reached dew point differential. So, um, you know, kind of just a way for me to keep track of it. Make sure that we're moving in the right direction. If we need to add heat, if we need to add dehumidification, whatever it might be, um, kind of allow us to proactively deal with that. Um, four different walls for a base plate. Yeah, yeah. you can add as many uh, material readings as you need. Like you can do as many drywall readings as you need. You can either mark them off on a moisture map workflow and and um, you can send me a message if you want to see what that what that looks like, but you can either set them on a moisture map or you can just label them as, you know, um, where they should be taken. But you can absolutely do as many per material as you need. No problem. Now, one of the biggest uh, biggest challenges um, that I think we were trying to solve when it came to hydro was the ability to justify the proper equipment needed on a job, right? So um, when we look at restoration contractors, when we survey our contractor base, we find the majority of them think that on at least some jobs, they're undersizing their equipment to a certain degree, or they do not have the you know uh, documentation required to back up why they place that much equipment on the job. The number one example for us that we find when we serve our customers is fans, but obviously also uh, dehumidification. So one of the goals of Hydro was to not just tell you how much equipment and put a workflow in place of how much equipment that you should be putting on site, but also then provide a really clear, transparent report at the end of the job that will back that information up um, in order to get paid in full, right? So I have uh, I have one customer in uh, Detroit, went out on a huge commercial loss, placed like 20 fans and a desiccant, right? Ended up putting the information in a hydro. It said, hey, you got to place five more dehumidifiers and you got to place another 20 fans, right? This was totally not what he was expecting to do. It was the quickest bill that he's ever got paid when he sent over the full end circle report at the end, right? So I think equipment and generating equipment revenue and initial profit from equipment is one of the, the easiest wins that you guys can get, you know, kind of ROI out of end circle. So here, I've entered in the, the full um, complex calculation and it's gonna tell me, let me go back into my calculation here. So I'll just give you guys an idea. It's gonna ask me first for the build out density, building construction, if HVAC will support the drying process. And it's going to spit out either both a pints recommendation as well as an air movers recommendation. Reason why we did pints versus telling you to put like three medium DQs on site in this situation to give you flexibility, right? So there is, you know, some uh, some systems out there that'll say, oh, you got to put three medium DQs. If you have two XLs, that's not going to do you a lot of good. So we always give a pints recommendation. It will actually count down 
um, and let you know when you have hit the capacity recommendations. Um, the question is, is there an option to add in a reading with a hydrometer new to the system? So I haven't explored everything yet. Uh, is a hydrometer just a type of moisture meter? Sorry there if I'm missing the lingo on that. And then we also had a question on what is the max uh, points you can set per room per chamber. There is no max. Um, you know, we we would let you set as many moisture points as you need. Um, I would say generally what we're kind of seeing in a standard room is like eight to ten uh, moisture points to make sure that you cover all your bases. But uh, Mike, if you see anything differently, let us know. When doing the equipment calculation, could you explain each of the options envelope density? Uh, totally, we can go through a go through a session um, after this. Uh, we are looking at trying to add in, you know, additional S five hundred kind of you know standards, but that's just directly from the standard. So uh, basically, like the tightness of the building envelope, how much does the um, uh, the um, area kind of breathe, if you will, versus like a really tight building envelope where you're not going to get airflow in and out versus you know uh, one that's not. Um, but we can definitely do like a complete session on that. Um, and that's just once again, right from the standard, um, can you, we can send out Derek to say, we have a cheat sheet as well, Mike. Yep. Specific to that stuff. Perfect. Kayla, we'll, uh, we'll send that out kind of along with the recording as well. So your team has access to that. And then Mike, you want to talk about, can you lock the selection of all the different meters that are in end circle? Yep. So I'm assuming this is the issue that you guys use maybe one or two meters on pretty much every job and you're tired of looking through a whole list every single time. So the idea would be that only show you meters that you use. Yes, that is in progress. Uh, I don't have a timeline when that's gonna be out, but we are gonna allow you guys to at the org level select just the meters that you use and you'll only see those meters every time. Or if you use one, it'll be the meter that defaults every time for you. For sure. And um, I also noticed here, I don't want to, I don't want to steal Mike Slender because I think he's got a bit of an announcement at the end, but I know you guys are using Tramex meters. So we do, uh, we are looking forward to, to an exciting partnership with the Tramex team um, that I think will, will really help you guys on the data entry side. Sounds good. Happy to slow things down here. Cool. Any other um, questions at all? Um, you guys have coming up here. I think we got a few that we've answered live in the chat, but feel free to. Is it possible to switch to type of dehumidifier instead of pines? Uh, the answer to that is is no. And we did that purposefully, right? Um, so we track the number of pints that a dehumidifier pulls. So you're not doing the calculations. Like we'll do the calculations in the back end because there's variance among devices and etc. There's no like good accurate way to tell you put this many dehumidifiers on. Um, the, the accurate way to do it is to measure the capacity of the dehumidifier. Is that fair to say, Mike? Yep. Yep. Perfect. So want to, want to make sure we introduce like flexibility, like, you know, one, get compliance, but also introduce flexibility. There's no way for us to know, you know, the exact type of equipment that you have on hand for that job that you're ready to place. Um, you know, we find the capacity recommendation is, uh, is probably the best. Cool. Since I have now um, asked to, or I now got my equipment recommendations, you'll see I get that alert. It's saying, hey, there's equipment that is needed on this job site. So if I go here into the equipment needed section, you'll see that we need 142 pints and we need either three to four units of air movers. So if I go here to my place equipment option, I'm going to use this quick add functionality. This quick add is brand new and extremely easy for your team to use. So anyone that picks up the app for the first time has this quick ad available to them. They can just fire in equipment without you having to inventory uh, your uh, warehouse first. Uh, this will do small, medium, XL, or medium, large XL dehumidifiers and have them instantly available to you. So you'll see here, I'm gonna add in a 120 pint dehu as well as a 60 pint. Once I've met this here, I've got 180 of 142 pints in the chamber. I know I'm good to move on. I've met the capacity recommendations. And then here under the air movers, I will just place my four units and then hit place. 
this is going to mark it off as green, right? Say, hey, you've met the capacity recommendations for the room. And that way I can then start tracking the readings off of my dehumidifiers throughout the job. Uh, Pure clean, no. Okay, perfect. I will, um, I will show the sketching process if we have, uh, if we have time at the end, if not, um, I think we've chatted before. That's Chris. Um, by all means, I can uh, send you a message afterwards just for the group. I know you guys want to, if you do want to hear it all about sketching, I want to get sidetracked on hydro. Uh, the sketching tool does not require LIDAR. It uses, if you have it, if you don't have it, you're good to go. It works with both Android and Apple. You get a ton of, a uh, ton of accuracy out of it. And all those sketches are, um, imported, uh, importable into Xactimate. Uh, so if I have a chance here at the end, I know Mike's got some more stuff he wants to talk about, but if I have a chance. I'll show the floor plan tool. If not, let's definitely set up a time afterwards. Um, and then we also had a question of can specialty equipment be added such as injected dry systems? The answer is yes, we uh, we absolutely can now. Uh, Mike's team has been working really, really hard on the um, uh, the ability to add specialty equipment. So um, Mike, correct me if I'm here, it's dehumidifiers, air movers, air scrubbers, dryers, heaters, as well as in other categories. Is that right? Yep, that's exactly it. So the injected dries would fall under dryers. Um, and then anything that's outside of those categories, literally any piece of equipment you can imagine can be put in the other category and documented. Perfect. Here's a question from Jason there about DHUs. Yeah, it is there a ham rating for pints. Yeah, that's correct, Jason. Uh, we also got a question. Do you have any equipment barcode scanning capability to add, remove equipment to jobs? We have not done that uh, to date, but we do have integration partners. So um, N-Circle does have an open API and does allow you guys to um, to add in as, as many um, or to work with as many parties that are willing to work with us. Uh, so we do have a few suggestions on the uh, the equipment side um, if you uh, if you do want to talk through that. If you're using asset tracking software, can it update the equipment placement record automatically? Um, I believe it would work in reverse in that case, Anthony. You might might be wrong. Um, if someone places a piece of equipment, might correct me here. Um, if someone places a piece of equipment in N Circle, it would update that record in the equipment tracking system. It should if it's linked up uh, through an integration on the claim. Yeah, um, through like a Kahi or something, it would. Yeah. No worries. Um, and then Roberto, I might, can you elaborate on when we get a low grain depression notification on our alerts within hydro? I might need a little bit of clarity on that question. And uh, Reed, we can, we can uh, add, figure that out offline. You have a question about like the, the drying record. Um, might be a bug or or something that we need to, to work through, but I'll just look for a specific example, but I can uh, catch up with you afterwards. Cool. There are any more questions? I see the uh, the chat is, uh, is blowing up a little bit there, guys. So if there is uh, questions in that, feel free to just throw them back into the, uh, the Q&A. Cool. And then the last step here um, in this situation is taking my dehumidifier reading. So I put de two dehumidifiers on site. I'm going to take my readings off of the exhaust. As well as possibly take a photo of the meter. Well, and then I will complete my readings for the day. So once I've completed my job setup task list, uh, you'll see here, we've got a few alerts. So if I wanna click into them and see what they are, I can hone in on them. This is kind of where my project manager dashboard becomes a little bit more relevant for me, if you will. I can see that I've had four material readings. None of them are dry yet. We can start to tracking how many are dry versus how many are still uh, still wet. If we're meeting our chamber tolerances, how much equipment, et cetera, job summary. Um, so this, this screen really only becomes useful once I start to use the task list, but then it's kind of a good place for me to go back and reference the job and make sure that we're on track without having to click into every uh, single task list. Quick add equipment. Does it double the equipment when you add your equipment log? 
I'm not sure I understand the question, but um, doesn't does not double equipment. Um, is this current patch with the updated feature live or is there an ET on it being available? Uh, my quick ad is out to everyone now or almost? Uh, sure. No, and it'll probably be mid-November when it's available okay. to everyone, for sure. But if anybody wants to get on the beta, they can uh, reach out to me and we can give you a preview. Cool. Yeah, it's uh, good to hear. I guess we're three weeks away. Um, but uh, like Mike said, if you want to reach out to either support at NCircle app or success at NCircle app, um, or I think we'll have Mike's email at the end, reach out to Mike. Uh, we will definitely, uh, definitely get you guys on the beta. I think it's a, a massive improvement with equipment management. Any plans on developing a desiccant option on DHU? Calc, yeah, perfect. Reach out to success at NCircle app. Um, pines only work for refrigerant DHU is not desiccant. Um, I think we're, we're open to it. I, I haven't seen a set standard like there is for uh, refrigerant dehumidifiers. Um, so I, I would be kind of curious to uh, to get anyone's take on that um, or if, if you want to chat about that offline. There is Kalash for both. Sounds good. If you want to shoot me, uh, me and, and Mike uh, a message afterwards, we can uh, definitely chat through that. Are you going to add where you can check equipment history on different losses? Might need a little bit of clarity on what you mean by that one, Garrett. Cool. So this is what it looks from the uh, the desktop view. Uh, you do have hydro here um, in the bottom. We did have a question about how you can take readings um, on the web. There's this just add reading button here uh, where you can add them in if you need to backdate them in like an example where maybe your phone died or something like that on site, right? Obviously we want to do as much data entry as we can on the, uh, on the mobile. You can also edit or uh, delete readings as needed on the web. And if you go here to your equipment tab, uh, you'll get a history of all the equipment, when it was installed, how long it's been running for, et cetera. Um, so this is, is kind of your, your web view into, uh, into NCircle or into NCircle Hydro. Cool. Now here's an example of a hydro report. Obviously, we put a lot of uh, you know time and effort into going through that task list. Um, so we need some way that we can then present this to a carrier, property manager, an adjuster, et cetera. So you'll see here the N Circle PDF report is all interactive. Um, just as a side note here, because uh, we did have a lot of questions about floor plan, this is what the floor plan tool looks like. It will automatically uh, label the rooms, windows, doors, et cetera, measurements. So if you guys are interested in learning more, um, this was actually taken by our director of product management. I know he's using an Android device. This did not require LIDAR. Um, and he scanned this, uh, this area of his house in about five minutes. All of the photos, including the photos of the moisture meter are date and time stamped. It can be pulled open, expanded and downloaded. We can include videos and we highly recommend include taking a video in the property, a video walkthrough just to show the extent of the damage, exactly where it went, exactly where the water moved to. And then here would be an example of a moisture report. This is called the moisture full report, right? So when you go into N circle, you would select hydro report or hydro full report. Um, this will also include all the date and timestamps as well as the photos. Um, so if you're not super worried about size or it's the end of a job, I would definitely do the hydro full report. We'll graph it out, include all the relevant calculations, include all the material. as well as specific documentation for the equipment calculation. And then most teams will also include stuff like signed uh, forms as well at the end. So stuff like signed work authorizations or COSs. Cool. I have a ton of questions here that I should answer. So I'm going to give it a second. Then I do want to make sure we kick it back over to Mike um, at the... Uh, 
how do you remove materials? I can show you how to remove materials. Uh, once they are removed, um, it does not ask for a moisture reading in the same place where it's been removed. Um, I can go through that. Um, equipment history where it shows unit three on voids. Um, I think Gary, you might be looking for kind of like a dedicated equipment tracking solution um, in that situation. So we might recommend an integration partner if you want to start doing like asset tracking as as well as as resource tracking. Um, Kaylin asked, please explain the difference in creating moisture map versus room sketch. Um, if you're using it for hydro, you should create a moisture map. Um, if someone's just using it for like reference areas for the repair, they might do a room sketch, but if you're using it for, uh, for hydro, you would want to do a moisture map, um, for either from scratch or from a sketch. Uh, do you have to use your camera for the sketch or can you do it by hand on a tablet or phone? If you're talking about the sketch that I just showed there, um, on the screen, that is all a video based solution. So you literally just take a, a video of the property and it will generate that floor plan for you, but that is all camera based technology. Cool. And then we have a few other feature questions here. So I'll, I'll leave those ones for now. We can, uh, if we have a chance, we can definitely, definitely come back to them here at the end and then keep the questions coming. With that, I do want to kick it over to, to Mike to talk about kind of some exciting hydro roadmap updates. Um, and then I will try and keep monitoring the chat, but I really appreciate the time guys. Uh, I went a little bit over there, so I appreciate uh, everyone's um, keen listening and, and all the questions that everyone asked. All right. So I'm back with uh, the hydro roadmap stuff. Uh, we have already sort of gone over this uh, new equipment update that we're launching in the next few weeks. So just to summarize the situation in the past that we've supported DHUs, air movers, and air scrubbers. Now what we've done is we've added three new categories that basically allows you unlimited uh, documentation of any of your equipment that you put on a job. Um, this will also, for those of you who do have inventory equipment, those new categories are also available for that. But uh, the, by far the easiest and quickest way to just put equipment on the job is through this quick add function. Um, and the nice thing is you can always change your labels. So for those of you who said we want to at least document a, a desiccant, you could just go in the other category and relabel that piece as a desiccant. Um, you won't get the, the readings necessarily, but you'll be able to document pretty much any piece of equipment you want. The same goes for all the other uh, categories in there. You can always label them whatever you want, um, have some descriptors in there, uh, you know, what placement they are um, and what their asset IDs, you can track all that with the new equipment process. And then another new update coming up is the reading screen. So if you notice when Chris and I were taking readings, that screen was, you know, just a kind of white screen with a few fields, not very intuitive to use. And so we've updated all those screens to be more focused on camera. Uh, so ideally what happens here is you go in, you take a picture of your moisture meter. You can use that picture as reference to fill in the details. And the nice thing is with this new screen, it's way more accessible. So the idea behind it was to be able to operate one-handed. So there's gonna be no more bending or twisting, pinching your wrist to try to hit any of the fields or any of the buttons. It's all right there in the middle of the screen for you to fill out with big fields, big numbers, and a save button right at the very bottom to make it really easy for you to capture those readings quickly because um, taking readings is by far one of the most time consuming things on the job. And so this will be coming out around the same time as that new equipment, the new equipment types updates as well. So I think this is going to be a very intuitive way to take your readings moving forward. And also just building on uh, what we were talking about earlier with Tramax, uh, probably sometime at, in the start of the new year, we will have an integration with the Tramax Bluetooth meters. So it'll be real quick and easy for you to use one of those meters and transfer through Bluetooth the, the readings right into Uncircle. Um, so that's going to be exciting. Keep your eyes open for that in the new year. And I think we can get back to a QA. and And the one question in there, Roberto asks about low grain depression. Uh, essentially, that alert pops up when the grain depression from your DHU is below five. And essentially, what that means is that uh, a lot of the insurance companies, if they ever catch a reading like that, they're going to question it and they're going to you know, push back. Why wasn't that addressed? And we raise that specifically for that purpose. So you can address it right away and it doesn't go days without, without uh, being fixed. 
And usually the response to it could be adding in some heat, checking your dehue, make sure that the cycle, the, the defrost cycle is running properly um, and that should, and then when you take another reading, that should be corrected. Cool. There's, uh, I noticed here uh, in the chat, Anthony Martin uh, is in the building. I don't think we met before Anthony, but he's with Kahi. Kahi is a, a phenomenal system on both the asset tracking and fleet management side. Um, so it sounds like he popped his contact info in there. There is a uh, is an integration between Encircle and Kahi. Um, so if you're an existing Encircle customer that wants some really in-depth uh, equipment and, and fleet management, uh, feel free to send Anthony a note and it looks like he'll take care of you, which is awesome. Thanks for joining today, Anthony. Cool. Any... In the materials, sorry, I got a few more questions about removing materials. In the materials rain section, there's a section that says material removed. How do you input the data? The material is still wet and it was removed. When you go to remove material would would be where the record was was kept. I think I might be missing something on this question. Mike, if you you know what the question, I think I've I think I've asked it a few times. Yeah, if you go into the material screen and go to that specific material, it should indicate that it is removed. Uh, I did see one in there as well about why does it continue to ask me for a reading in some places? I think that is a bug that I could get fixed. I've seen that in other places and it's definitely something that's fixable because it shouldn't be shown. There is no option to remove material, only a remove material point here. Let me get back to a screen share here. Sorry, guys. So if I uh, grab the screen share here, so it can kind of a, become practical. So cool. So if I, if I go here into my task list, just cause it's where I am at the moment, if I go into moisture content readings and I click on the material, you'll see here that I have the option to remove material. And I can add a note to it here saying, you know, too saturated, too dry. Probably not a good example, but you get the idea. That will remove the material. It's now going to mark it as removed and it should not ask you for additional readings. If it is, we will we will definitely investigate that. But that is how you uh, how you remove material. Cool. Jacob mentioned he likes one of the room view. You can definitely uh, definitely do that as well. Um, when the tech put in the wrong kind of material on hydro in a few days of monitoring done, can you change the material? Do you have to add new material and delete the incorrect one? I am unsure of that, Andrew. I haven't heard that question before. Um, I don't know if Mike knows. If not, I'm happy to test afterwards and, and get back to you. Yeah, unfortunately, you can't change the name of a material, but you can add another material and backdate readings so that they match up. So the idea would be you delete the old material, add the correct one, in, and then add backdated readings. Cool. I also have a question. Uh, when picking up equipment, is it possible to make adjustments? I'm not sure what we mean by that one. Um, last last uh, kind of thing that I see here, just real quick, it says, will you go over the hydro EQ, the drying process, like at the end when you are dry and removing EQ? Probably the easiest way to do it here is when you go into your hydro home screen and you go into equipment. There's a button up here, three dots. Sorry, you probably can't see my mouse. Three dots up here, and you can just remove all equipment, uh, which will remove it all from the job at the end. That's good. Uh, that's good. Uh, good feedback, Ahmed. If there's, uh, we'll we'll take that in consideration too from the UX side if it's not super clear. But uh, glad we were able to to walk through that. Cool. Um, any other questions here? I think we've uh, we've answered that live. Can the moisture content of a sample be recorded in a similar manner to those of moisture meters? Not sure what you mean by sample in that situation. Yes, uh, Matt, all this training is in tutorials. Um, 
there's kind of a few options here that I, I can briefly talk about here at the end uh, for training. One, every NCircle customer has access to NCircle University. NCircle University is our online training academy. All of the courses are IICRC certified for continuing education credits. So I do really recommend uh, utilizing NCircle University. Everyone also has a dedicated customer success manager. Um, so you're more than welcome to reach out to them. If you don't know who your success manager is, just email success at ncircleapp.com and they will quickly hop on it and let you know who they are. Um, and then we also have just online training modules on our help site. Uh, Reed asks, how can I manipulate a sketch on the desktop? Currently the sketch is for uh, mobile only, uh, so it cannot be manipulated on the, the desktop. Um, correct, if you're talking about a moisture map sketch. This. Another moisture point or moisture map question there about uh, locking up the stickers on the map. That's definitely on my radar to add in there so that it makes it easier for you guys to be in the map and do a workflow without actually moving the points around accidentally. So that's definitely on my radar. When removing equipment from a moisture map, drag to the X and drop. Uh, yeah, so the question, Kaylin, there, um, if you're removing equipment from a moisture map, uh, remove equipment kind of like I showed there with the workflow with the equipment tab, um, we would think you're trying to delete it in that situation. So if you remove it, it won't appear on your moisture map anymore, but don't, that, that's for like someone accidentally entered one, they need to delete it. Um, and then we'll, we'll delete the record as well. So just remove equipment in that situation. Awesome. Thanks again for the time today, guys, and reach out with any questions. Thanks, everyone.